Saturday. And Liu was there. Gerlego working from the point. What is he going to do with it? He's weaving his way in over the back. Hey guys, welcome back to Bag of Six Golf. Today we're in the Granite. It's a private course in the Durham region. And I'm so happy to be playing next to Leaf Legend, first 50 goal scorer in franchise history, legend Mr. Rick Vive. Rick, great to have you on. Really looking forward to playing with you. I'm happy to be here and uh, you know what? The 50 goals, that was 40 years ago. Crazy. It, it's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now I'm an old man now. <laughs> still still can hit the ball though. Hope you guys enjoy. All right guys. All right, Rick. So, in the storied, long history of the Maple Leafs, how does it feel to be the first player to score 50 goals in that in that franchise? And not do it once, but to do it three years in a row. It was it was amazing, really. I mean, you know, when I got to 45, the press started talking to me about being the first player to score 50 goals. I'm thinking, well, hold on. Now. Was that always in your in mind? Going, no, going no, away? it wasn't. But wow. like, again, like I look at and I think, well, all the great players have played here, right. and nobody did it. And then the game before the 50th goal, I broke Frank Mahavlis' record. He came down to the rink the next day, congratulated me, and oh, nice. took pictures with me. I thought it was uh, outstanding for him to do that. But it was just, uh, I mean. It can't get any better than doing something like that with a franchise that, that had been around probably, at that time, probably about 80 years, probably. Right. You know, so it's amazing. pretty special. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Rick. Yeah. Okay, I got the right weapon. Good line, I like the line, but down with it. Oh my god, fucking flipped it. Sit! Stop, baby, stop. It took I don't know what it was, but it took forever to get it set up and everything and then the pitcher was over, we were all getting off and whatever, and the dog tried to get up and it started yelping. His balls were frozen to the fucking ice. <laughs> <laughs> they had to get too. the hot water out in the, the thing. To, oh, yeah. you're kidding. <laughs> From that time on, Harold used to put a rug down for him. <laughs> Alright guys, so uh, typical thing here on Bag of Sticks, 
if uh, one group or the other is going to go for a birdie, we get to mess with them a little bit. So Yannick and Dana uh, decided that we're going to putt for, or we're going to make the putt for birdie with a hockey stick today. So I kind of like that. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Vive? I think I'll be better with the stick than my putter. <laughs> <laughs> and you can hit stick handle like that. hole and uh, I just want to ask Rick a quick question we all know he's a great hockey player and all-star hockey player but I want to talk to you about the coaching side of things uh, later on in life you were able to coach yeah. on different leagues and I just want to know how, how the experience was and if you enjoyed it you thought it was a grind well, well what did you think First of all, I'm coaching now. We're down two going into the ninth hole, okay? So, okay, <laughs> partner, so we, we need to pick it up a little yeah, bit. All right. Um, you know what? I love coaching. And uh, my first year was tough because you finish playing and you're behind the bench. You can't do anything. Like, you know, you can't go out on the ice and right. win the hockey game for your team or anything. Right. So it was a little bit frustrating, but I took an online uh, psychology course after I finished playing and bought some books and... I think my biggest skill was my communication ability with the players, right. and I got the most out of them. And uh, you know what? I had I had a lot of fun coaching. It was it was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. We're here on hole 16. Uh, me and Rick just squared it up. Yeah, we did. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Baby. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I want to talk to you about the Harold Ballard years. I know a lot of people are interested in that era and have heard a lot of stories about this guy. Like, I know you, when you scored your first uh, 50, I think the team only had 20 wins. Yeah, we might have had maybe 21 or 22. Right. <laughs> but probably not which many a, more. Which amazes me, but. Can you uh, maybe talk about some craziness of Harold Ballard and what it was like uh, playing in that era under him? Uh, it was pretty wild, actually. I mean, uh, now Harold wasn't a bad person or anything. He didn't treat us poorly or anything, but he was very, very cheap. And he didn't spend the money on the front office and the general manager and the coaches and stuff like that that made big decisions in how our team was put together, right? So. That really hurt us a lot. Uh, we drafted well, but guys were brought in too early. Uh, one year, he canceled the charters halfway through the season because he, the flight attendant wouldn't let him have chocolate bars because he was a diabetic. <laughs> so, but you know what he didn't realize was that was the year we had Inacek and Freacher and Duras came over from uh, Czech Republic, and we were the fifth best team in the league in the second half after he canceled the charter because we got to hang out together and got to trust one another a little bit more and okay. you know learn a little bit more about each other but I don't think he even realized that and, uh, but over 
She wouldn't let him have a chocolate bar, so he canceled the damn charter. So I, that's crazy. That's, that's, a, that's a Harold Mallard. <laughs> well, you know what? It's just your state there. Ah, oh, fuck! Did I go after that? It did? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, we're here on hole 17. We're down one. We keep forgetting about this, to be yep. honest. <laughs> so I finally, we, uh, Rick reminded me. These guys are going for, uh, for birdie. So obviously, if you want to catch up, we're going to make you guys putt with the sticks today, okay? No problem. Of course. All right. Backhanders allowed? Uh, no. Your choice. No way. <laughs> Rick said no. No. Rick said no. That's it. Okay, Dana. Oh. 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 Nice. Okay, in for bogey, we got a par. A par. Oh! 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 Happy! So we're here on 18 at the Granite Golf Club. I'm here with the superintendent, Yannick Mayer. Uh, Yannick, you're doing such a beautiful job here. This course is amazing. Uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about your course. Sure. Yeah, we're an 18-hole private club, family-oriented. Uh, we're cut through the Oak Ridges Moraine. Uh, Thomas McBroom designed it back in 2000, I believe. Did an excellent job, and uh, the maintenance team over the last 20 years, uh, we've been trying just to improve it day after day week after week and year after year, um, just to provide the best possible conditions for our membership. Yeah, it's beautiful condition. Beautiful. I had a great time. Me and Rick had a great time. Uh, I love me playing with you guys. Uh, hopefully we play again, but uh, thanks again for having us out. Oh, no problem. And, and, uh, much appreciated. It was awesome having you and You're doing and a Rick. great job out here. Thank you. The members should be proud of you. Appreciate it. All right, we're just uh, we're just finishing up the round here. Um, fortunately, we lost to these guys, but uh, yeah. we weren't trying. <laughs> it's a super, so well, we gave them yeah. a break. But anyways, <laughs> uh, Rick, I know you're an author. You wrote this book with Scott Morrison, Catch Twenty Two. Um, I just want to go over what, how long in the making has this book been in, and. Uh, 
What's it about? Well, it came out in uh, November, the first year of the pandemic. So that would have been 21, I guess, or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of a kind of a bad time for it to come out because I couldn't go across the country and do book signings right. and that sort of thing. Uh, but the reason I wrote it, uh, you know, I just hear a lot of fans talking about players in the top leagues and in all different sports and how great their life is and, and how great it must have been growing up and all that kind of stuff. And, and you know what? I mean, there's a lot of guys in, in the top leagues that had troubles in their youth and, you know, even as adults. And, uh, you know, so I wanted to kind of shed the light on my life and what it was like and what I went through. And, and that's right. kind of how we started it. Right, there's like a preconception if you're an, a professional athlete, then your life is like mm -hmm. glorious and, and bountiful, but that's not the case. No, absolutely. And that's, you know, that's kind of one of the reasons why I wrote it was I wanted people to realize that, you know what, regardless of how good you are as a professional in one of the top leagues, right. there's hurdles that you had to overcome throughout your life and, and in order to make it there. And I just wanted to share that with everybody. Right. I'm look, I haven't read it yet, but I, this is the first book I'm going to read probably starting tomorrow. So you guys get the book. It's going to be a great read. Well, Rick, it was a pleasure meeting you. Yeah, it was a great it time was great. golfing with you. And you're such a great guy. I love this guy. So Rick Vive, first 50 goal scorer for the Maple Leafs. Amazing and a legend. Pleasure golfing with you. Rick. My pleasure, yeah. And unfortunately, we lost these guys. Right. But. But, but hey, we had to let them win. Exactly. Right? Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. All right. Thanks, Squid. <laughs>